Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. For today's video, I wanted to use the new Tarte Busy Gal Goals palette, and I also had a couple people say they wanted to see what eyeshadow brushes that I use, so I thought that I would throw that in there as well. So if you want to see how I got this look and what brushes that I use, then just keep watching. So I always like to start off with a transition color. You want this to be a lighter shade because this kind of blends all your shadows together. Plus you can also use it to go back and blend out your crease in case you get it a little bit too dark. For this shade, I like to use a kind of fluffy brush like this one because that's not gonna get a whole lot of product so it won't get too dark. This color is gonna go right above your crease. That's why you don't want it to be too dark because right underneath your brow bone, you want to keep that lighter. I usually don't put a shade there, but that is where you would highlight if that is something you do. So this specific brush is from the Morphe and Jaclyn Hill collection. It is the JH32, but once again, here is what it looks like. So you can see if you have a similar brush at home. So I always like to start off with just a little bit because it is easier to build the shade instead of taking away. So you always want to start off with just a little bit and just add to it. So you always want to start with your brush back here because that's where the most product is gonna go. And as you can see, I'm not adding more. I'm just taking that shadow and bringing it to the inside of my eye, if that makes sense. Because we are naturally darker in the inner corner, so you don't want the inner corner to be too dark. Since I do have hooded eyes, I always like to kind of relax. That way I can see how high it went and see if I need to go any higher. Because if you see like this, it seems like it's pretty high, but then when I relax, you can barely see this eye, so I need to go up a little bit higher. After I have it as dark as I want, I will take a, another fluffy brush. This one is clean. It is the M441, also by Morphe, and I will just buff out the edges just to make sure there are no harsh lines because I hate when there is a sharp line of eyeshadow. I always like to make sure it is nice and blended. So I don't know if you can tell, but I'm just going along the edges. This is also something you can do if you get this shade too dark, is you can go over where you put it and it will kind of soften it up a little bit. And I always kind of go at the edge and kind of blend up. That way I don't go too far down because that makes your eyes look kind of droopy. And nobody likes that. So all the brushes I'm using are from Morphe. They are some of my favorite brushes. This next one is the R38. It's a little bit more dense. And this is the one that I'm gonna be using for my crease. The color I'm gonna be using is called Go Getter. Once again, since I have hooded eyes, I kind of have to make my own crease, meaning I go above my crease, just my natural crease, just a little bit. Because if you can see, here is where my natural crease is, but then when I relax, you can't see that. So if I put the shade in my natural crease, you won't be able to see it. So I go a little bit above that. Hopefully that makes sense. And then I kind of do go in my natural crease a little bit. That way it will kind of help blend my lid color all together. And then taking my clean fluffy brush and buffing out the edges. Can y'all hear Daisy? having a dream. So this is where you could go back in with your transition color if you needed to to buff out the crease if you got it too dark. I like how it turned out but if you did go too dark and the clean fluffy brush didn't buff it out you would go in with your transition shade. That's why you want to use a lighter eyeshadow for that. For my lower lash line a lot of times I will use the same eyeshadow that I used for my crease. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that using the R. 41 I think. I've used these so much 
that the numbers have faded but here is what it looks like and this is my all-time favorite brush to buff out the lower lash line I know everybody has their own preferences but this one is my personal favorite I already line my lower waterline with a black eyeliner I do this for just about any look that I do and that is the only eyeliner I do so I'm gonna go ahead and add this and you can go as low as you want okay so once I have the shadow once again going in with that clean fluffy brush and buffing it out so that's why I kind of take it down kind of far because if I didn't do it quite as far it would kind of buff it off to where you couldn't really see much. So here is another brush that some people like to use for their lower lash line. I personally only use this if I'm going to tight line my lower lash line, meaning I just kind of buff the shadow into my lower lashes. This one is the M432 for reference. Next, I'm gonna do my lid, and for that, I always like to use a flat, dense brush like this one right here because that is really gonna pack on the eyeshadow. This is another one from the Morphe and Jaclyn Hill collection, the JH41. This is very, very similar to the MAC 242. That was Jaclyn's favorite eyeshadow brush, so that's what inspired her to create this one, and I love, love, love this one. So for my lid, I'm going to use the shade called Gramet. Whenever I use shimmer shades like this, I like to kind of pat it. That really packs it in. So if you wanted to, you could go ahead and end the eyeshadow right here and just add some mascara and throw on a lip. But I always like to kind of darken up my looks a little bit by adding a darker shadow to the outer corner of my lid and my lower lash line. So I'm going to go ahead and do that for this look. That way you can see what brush I use to do that. And it is the M433 that looks like this. And I'm going to use the shade called Hustle, which is a pretty hunter green. So I kind of just tap it in the outer corner and kind of just softly drag it towards the middle. Hopefully that's making sense. Because when you kind of do that and kind of push it into the lid, it helps it to blend a little bit better. So after I add some to the outer corner, I always like to drag it up into my natural crease a little bit. That way it kind of blends everything together. And then if I need to, add a little bit more. And then I will also drag it along the outer corner of my lower lash line as well. As you can see, it makes the look a little bit more smoky without going full on dark smoky eye. So hopefully this will give you some ideas to use those darker shades in the eyeshadow palette that you wouldn't normally use. And now that I have all my eyeshadow in place, this is when I'm gonna go back and darken anything else that I messed up or if I want it to stand out a little bit more. So I'm gonna go back in with my lid color to add a little bit more to make that pop. And I kind of wiped some off whenever I did that darker in the crease. So I'm just gonna make that a little brighter. And then I kind of fade it into that darker so I don't have just a straight line. And then I'm gonna go back in with that crease color to kind of brighten up in the inner corner. Okay, so now I'm just gonna add some mascara and a lip and this look will be complete. So I'm gonna use the Man Eater Mascara by Tarte. Here is what this brush looks like. I really like how small it is and since it's the silicone type, it really gets in there and separates so it doesn't get clumpy. And for lips, I'm going to mix these two MAC lipsticks in the shade Velvet Teddy and Creme de Nude. 
This one's usually a little bit too dark for me on its own. And then Creme de Nude is too nude for me on its own. So I love these two mixed together. So there you have it. I really hope that y'all enjoyed seeing this new Tarte eyeshadow palette along with what eyeshadow brushes that I like to use. I will list and link all the brushes that I talked about down below in the description bar in case you want to check them out. And just remember that these are just the brushes that I personally like. You don't have to use these exact same ones or even as many as I do. I just like to use that many. But one good thing about Morphe brushes is they are very affordable if you did want to get them all. But if you did like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I make a new video every week. But I don't have anything else to say except thank you for watching. And I will see you all in my next video.